Welcome back to OTBAM. Time to turn our attention to hurling. We've got two big quarterfinals this weekend. Dublin against Cork in Semple Stadium and Tipperary against Waterford in Parky Cueve. Both of those games happening on Saturday. The big hurling news though this week is that Joe Canning has retired from inter-county hurling and his former teammate James Scahill is with us this morning. James, good morning to you. Hi, Owen. How things? Yeah, good. So, did you see this coming in the end? I know you were with us on Saturday saying that maybe it was time for, for Joe to go, but I guess the the couple of days were left and obviously there was uh, the interview here on OTBAM yesterday morning where uh, we perhaps suspected that maybe he might just hang on and maybe think it over a little bit longer and come back for one last hurrah. Yeah, when I, when I spoke on Saturday, I was expecting, you know, a couple of terms of the Galway camp and I didn't exactly outline who, but... You know, obviously the, the media, the way things are, they, they'd focus in on him being with his age and whatnot and what he's done in the game and so far. But um, I didn't expect it so, I would say, soon after the game, I thought that there may be that anyone who was making a decision would, would go through a club campaign and maybe make it in the winter. But, you know, he's always been his own man. He's always been quite measured in what he's done uh, on and off the pitch, let's say. So when he came out with the news yesterday, I, I understood he'd be, he'd be very content in his decision and happy in the decision he made. How big a loss immediately is he going to be to Galway? Um, that's that's actually, you know, that's even too hard to quantify, to mm. be honest, um, Owen, because, you know, you never really get the true sense of greatness until it's gone, like, you know, and, and like, you know, when other inter-county players retire across the country, you feel nothing, but then when, when on your own retires and, and he was, he's been as good and as charismatic as he's been, it nearly feels like a debt to your <laughs> I don't want to you know, over-exaggerate that, but... You know, he's he's an terribly important, difficult individual to 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 replace. You, you can't. There's no individual in Galway that's going to replace him. That's that's just a fact. And there's no one that's going to come anytime soon that's going to replace him as an individual. You know, I think it's going to be very difficult to get that kind of uh, effort, work ethic, skill, you know, excellence, big scores. It's just it's not there at the moment to say. So I think the Galway team is going to need time to rejuvenate. But he himself, like he he's. His, his talents, he's, you have to understand, right, that, that his talents were so good at a young age that the man was under such pressure to perform, you know, early, early days, like when he was seen at 15 and 16. And, and for him to perform consistently under the under the scrutiny of the public and the Galway public, especially hurling people, uh, so he performed consistently and, and under extreme excellence the whole time has been remarkable. You know, if any young player goes into a team one, I think the huge thing he needs is time to develop and, and to really be allowed to make errors but he never got that opportunity. You know, he he was expected to be scored in one ten and one twelve every day he went out, and that was none none more so evident in his debut. Uh, who is not, not his debut, but his big debut game, which was against Cork in eight, and he had nineteen. You know, scored in two twelve. If someone did that nowadays, you know, I think the media would lose their mind entirely. You know, so it's very hard to get a measure uh, of the person that say he's lost to a team until you actually start a new campaign. But like he's just, it's going to be a very very huge void, a huge void for Galway to fill. You were playing that day in 08, I assume, James, were you? Yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. I was. And again, it was just um, in real time. Like, see, I was, I suppose at that stage I was playing with him for, you know, six or seven years. I, I can't really remember, but I wasn't really too surprised, you know, what he what he was able to execute. But what really surprised me was that he was able to ex- execute on certain type of people he was marking. Like, people would forget he was marking the rock, caught a ball over his head, out-muscled him for a goal, uh, split the rock open, you know, and roofed, you know, and that was that was huge. Then he went on John Gardner and took John Gardner for a run around Thurles, you know. So it wasn't that he just executed, like, the skills of the game and, and everything that you want to see in a game on, on, on an over day. Like, he executed on two of the best Cork defenders ever, you know, and that was, that was huge. And he really announced himself on the scene. And probably, I think, if I'm honest, I think going, it probably set him up for a difficult, you know, I would say career in, in the immediate aftermath of that game because that was nearly the expectancy for every day when he went out, you know, mm-hmm. even though that's an impossibility. You know, how do you expect a young fellow to score two twelve every day against top tier opposition? But he would always strive to do so, you know. Like I'm a big a big fan of the NFL and Bill, Bill Belichick was the coach of the Patriots. He says he said, you know, a talent sets the floor, but you know, the character sets the ceiling and he had great character, you know, to perform in big in big games. You know, he he, he never went missing. Like yeah, I can I can tell you for sure. There's no guy person or no person across the hurling, hurling world that say that that's we've missing on a big game. That's, that's the last thing he did. He always showed up and, and uh, got going through. And like only for him, in, in spe- specifically 2017, we know Ireland for anyone because that, that wonder score he got. And, um, you know, 
he's just uh, he deserves enormous credit, and I hope he's he's I hope he's happy in his, his decision and that he can um, have happy retirement. It's like we've been chatting to it's not O'Toole about Snead to Puspura there a moment ago, and he was just outlining how brutal top level sport is. And when you look mm-hmm. around at some of maybe the heartbreak that certain counties have had in hurling over the last 10, 15 years, you can put hurling right in that bracket as well as a, as a truly brutal sport at an inter county level. Even when you look around yeah. the country at the moment, and even on Saturday alone, you'd Canning and you'd Patrick Horgan and you'd Tony Kelly, all guns blazing, and thinking to yourself, like, I mean, all three of these are likely to, to not win the All-Ireland this year because Limerick, are chances are going to be All-Ireland champions once again. That that mm-hmm. talent and that commitment doesn't guarantee you anything. And it might yeah. be some mild comfort, though, to people that at least there's 2017 because in such a brutal sport, it could so easily have been a career without any All-Ireland. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's the sport that, that, that can be influenced by one man or can't be dominated by one man. You know, And that's why the Kidney teams of the previous years you know, their their team was so dominant and their management team was so dominant and they were just so ahead of the curve that they got so many in Ireland. And, you know, I mentioned yesterday to someone that, you know, Joe, for me, is the best hurler ever um, in the history of the game. I, I, I don't care what everybody says. He's the best hurler ever. And the only, I would hope that that the, the team accolades don't, you know, outweigh his strength in, the, in that conversation because, like, obviously, Henry Shefflin and the likes have, you know, tenor Ireland, but it was the fact that when you're talking simple individual terms, Joe was the best ever. He was the best hurler ever, and, I, and that that never go doubt in my mind. Um, but like that, I, I just don't think the supporting cast around him, me included, were you know were, were I suppose good enough as a collective to get him over the line more more than once. But I think that one in Ireland uh, own would be huge for him for his legacy, and just to know that all the efforts that went in throughout the years, you know, culminated in a victory. Albeit we we got one, but still the fact is we got one, and one is huge in the company in comparison to none. James, good morning. To you. You've touched on it there a couple of times, just about the his influence in the team. Uh, it's hard to say it about the 2017 team necessarily, but over the years, looking at Joe from the outside, looking in, carrying Galway on days, were there days in your position where you were looking out the pitch, going, "We're not on it today," and geez, we really hope that this guy has one of his games and and he can carry us over the line. One hundred percent. Yeah, there's been days that, that started off with my very early days with him, like when we were 14. You know, it's like where's the red helmet? You know, and just just pluck it down there and see what happens. You know, there was there were some days there wasn't just a senior either. Like there was days we had, uh, let me see, now under twenty one game we played clear in two thousand nine, and it was just simply, you know, I had fourteen teammates, but I was only looking for one. And where is he? With every ball that we had to hit out, I was looking for him, and he ended up scoring four seven with, you know, twenty ones penalties, overhead flicks, overhead pulls. You know, he was just awesome. Like and his influence over the team is huge, and like you'd always try. You'd always hope that he'd get into the game early and kind of settle early, or not maybe get a handy free. You know what I mean? Just get something on the board so that he could tape off. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, and like, uh, and that that he he'd nearly carry it because you'd be. And I said it there a minute ago. We did. I won't say questioning the supporting cast, but like when you've got a talent as high as as, as Joe is, and then the people around him aren't quite aren't quite as high, you're going to look for him every time and hope that he carries it through. You know, and that, that's another point I made about. We, what the Kinney side of things is like Shefflin has massive support and talent around him, you know, not at the same level as Shefflin, but very, very close, you know what I mean? So it was easier for Kinney to find a balance in those big games where for us going back through the years, you know, he I won't say Joe was on his own, but God, he was given the mantle of having to carry that team. And he did it well, in fairness to him. Can I ask you on that point then, just it raises an interesting question because he spoke to the lad yesterday, obviously before he announced his retirement about the injuries and yeah. the niggles was the word that he used um, that had sort of maybe taken his toll a little bit on him. He's only 32. You bowed out of the game yourself, I think at the same age, not that mm-hmm. long ago. Um, do you think if he was at like a Kilkenny or a Limerick at the minute or one of those teams that are competing for sort of regularly that he might have put the niggles and that stuff in his back pocket but the thoughts of the slog and the carrying of the team for another 12 or 24 months were sort of too much for him No I don't think so I disagree there because again you have to understand the character of the person and you know he, he was always he's always, he was always team first despite what anyone might, might think about you know the personal accolades and whatnot and scoring records that I don't think that ever weighed in his mind I always think he was team first and if he was going to come back, he'd be all in or all out, you know. And I, I don't even think he'd, he'd look at Galway's, I suppose, position, if you like to call it, in the hurling world at the moment, and, and let that weigh his decision. I thought I would think that if he was able to offer uh, something positive to the team, he'd return, uh, uh, you know, on, on, a, on the same capacity at the minute. But like, again, like he mentioned himself about the injuries, like people have to understand that 
you know, he's probably, as, as we speak right now, he's probably walking around or maybe in bed, I'm not sure, but he's probably in pain in some capacity. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and like that, uh, he spent an awful lot of his career in in pain through injuries and through needles and through getting, like he, he received an awful lot of, even though people like, might like to highlight it, he, he did, like he received an awful lot of off the ball, see the pun, you know, um, how would I say, attention. You know what I mean? Whether that be punishment, trophy, almost, like, James. Is that is that yeah, too much? Exactly. It was really like, you know, it's really like a gladiator arena. Every time he went in, he was the focal point for every single defender. And then every defender, whether it be in a club game or inter county game, would try and measure themselves on, off Joe. And the good guys, like the Jake Jadenis or, or the Jackie Tyrrells, would try hurl him, you know, to get a fair measure. But then you get some guys in other capacities or other other uh, teams that think that the best way to get a measure off him is to is to beat him. You know what I mean? And that, and like, he's more times that he. That he's got knocks to hands, wrists, elbows, you know, all over the place, just through a, a sense of brutality. Like so, that that goes back to my point that if he was going to come back with forward, like he'd be all in, right? You know, maybe the body just probably suffered a bit more than it, than it should have. You know what I mean? Because all the great players, players get they get flipping unnecessary attention because you know others aren't capable of marking them in the fairway. And I think yeah, that was a, a Joe received an awful lot of that, and especially when Portumna were going high or flying high, like say throughout their club campaigns, you have clubs in Galway that. Try knock them down a peg or two, if you get me, you know, metaphorically speaking. So, um, I, I don't think if he was in a Kikini or or or, or a Limerick or a Cork or whatever you say that he'd be going back, as, uh, you know, straight away because of him. I just think that if he, if he wasn't able to offer himself 100%, you know, that's why he would retire, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, just two two very quick ones for me, just on Joe before we move it on. What is there? I, I was kind of asking that maybe on the base of James Moore that if the niggles sort of disappeared in six months or in eight months that at that still fairly young age that we might see him again in a Galway shirt or do you think that's Ooh. that's there's no chance of that I um, geez, there's a chance I can tell you there's a chance for everything um, uh, stranger things have happened you know what I mean uh, I, I don't know is the honest honest answer I'm a bit torn because like again I said at the start of the show that he was he'd always be very measured you know and calculated in what he would he would do and you know if he's making a decision that the, this early after the game and especially in the dressing room after the game, I think he he would have mulled over, you know, quite a bit, and he would have been quite methodical in, in analysing that, you know, maybe if I did, if I do, you know, shake injuries, or if I do come to the club campaign fairly good and I, I shake everything, will I come back? And you know, I, I think he would have thought of all that, you know, and um, I think I think he he came to his decision content that that wasn't going to be a possibility. But like, strange things have happened. I don't know, Les. Like, it's just so hard to know. You know I mean, if he yeah. if he does get it. You know, a break and a mental break, and that's the big thing. You know, get away from you know the, the sport, I suppose, the intercounty sport, and just take a break and you know recharge the batteries on, on a personal level, let's say, and get away. Uh, you know, mentally from the, from the toads of being an intercounty player, and maybe you wouldn't know it could be a snowball effect. You could get a bit, you know, the body could come back. You just don't know, like you just don't yeah, know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I just what, I, as what? Well, no, 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 I, I would I would say no initially, but again, anything can happen. Who knows? You were go, you trained with him for twenty years. I mean, between the underage grade and, and all the way up. Yeah. What because you were both starting most games. Uh, we did you we were, were you never sort of been peppered by shots from him or were you generally like how how did that work? How do you mean? Like you know when the, when the teams were split up in training and you were both on the first team that you would yeah. that he wouldn't necessarily then be firing in on you or were you going to training every day taking oh, fifty geez, much he fired or he fired in on me more times than once, you know. Like uh, to, to to give you the kind of the, the an example of the power of a shot, like you know, we had in Jordan Nan's time, he brought in these baseball machines, you know, the main machines that throw up the baseballs. He brought in MLB, like and so then the Oaks used to go up to 120 kilometers an hour, and you know, you'd have some shot, you'd have some chance to save them, you know. When Canning threw over a ball, so you just have to get out of the way, you know what I mean? Because it just, it just came with such power, and he's caught me more than once, like and. In a, in a few more private parts than I'd like, you know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> it was just the nature of it all throughout the years, you know. Um, that like, you'd always be facing off, and sure, always trying to best each other as best you could, you know what I mean? And sure, every time I lost, so that's kind of the that was the nature of it all, I say. But he was a uh, John, you said 20 years there, and God, that's like that's a lifetime for some people, and you know, it's kind of it's uh, it's an end of an era, like it's, it's sad in one way, you know what I mean? It's the end of an era, and I only said yesterday, it feels like yesterday that we were, you know talking out on 13 years of age the two of us and it feels like this morning you know that we were winning minors of 21 and now here we are at, at his retirement you know so it's just things go so quick 
so, go so quick, excuse me. So there's there's a huge appreciation on my part for for having him, you know, in my life at that time, let's say, and on the teams that I was on, because without him, um, I certainly wouldn't have, wouldn't have won what I won. Yeah, what, what a player. Un- unfortunately, we're, we're basically out of time, James, and there are two quarterfinals <laughs> to preview. We will, I think it's totally worth getting your memories yeah. of uh, Gerlach Nan's baseball machine, though, in fairness. We wouldn't have got that if we went too deep on these quarterfinals. Double yeah. against Cork, Tipperary against Waterford. What, what are you most looking forward to this weekend and how do you see them going? Um, I'm really looking forward to see how Tipperary will go against the water running game. Um, Waterford run, have good momentum at the moment and I think that they set the blueprint uh, for Liam Sheedy's defence. So I'd like to see what Liam Sheedy and his team bring you know, after the Limerick debacle uh, to, to a Waterford team who have great energy and to a Waterford crowd who have great you know, momentum at the minute. So I'm looking forward to that battle. I'm also looking forward to how Dublin... Uh, cater for Cork's movement. Uh, I, I'm interested to see how Matty Kinney, you know, uh, will will try and combat their their forwards who are, who are again are going well at the moment. And you know, they're two very interesting games. And like games nowadays are extremely hard to call. Um, I've got the two goal games wrong, obviously, but I do think in this instance, I think Tip will shade Watford. And I think Cork will shade Dublin. Right. Very good. Well, enjoy the weekend's hurling, James. We'll chat to you again next week. Thank you, guys.